gracious enough to come to this convocation and I love her with no qualms, I love her. We, we are cut from the same cloth, hallelujah. We are knit by the same spirit and I've known her for years, but how I knew her then is not how I know her now. She is wonderfully empowered by God. She has practical teachings of a mother. She has the anointing of a prophetess. And she's got the delivering power of Mother Stella Boyd. I want everybody in this room to stand here where you're already standing. Give God praise as Pastor Tamara Bennett comes. Let's give Jesus some praise now. Can you help me praise Jesus? We've already entered in. Ain't nothing left to do but praise him now. Hallelujah. Lord, we honor you. We praise you for you are our God. And beside thee, there is no other. Father, we ask that you continue to have your way in this place. Father, let your will be done. Let your absolute kingdom come. Bless these, your precious people that have been called by your mighty name. Holy Ghost, have your way in this place. And may your assignment be fulfilled. Oh, in your name, Jesus, bless this manservant that they call by your precious name. Father, look on the man of this house. Anoint him, anoint his family. Keep his soul unto thee, O oh Lord. And Father, we praise you for all these things. We give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Help the people. Help me to praise the Lord tonight, all the people of God. Let's give our king some praise. Oh, let's praise Jesus. He's already here. While you're still standing, help me thank God for Dr. Flake and his beautiful wife and her absence. Just a, I said to Dr. Flake that I would love the opportunity to sit at his feet, and I don't say that about many people, but we've heard nothing but good things about you, and the fruit of your labor is evident in this city. And uh, we're honored to be able to minister in such a renowned house. Again, I appreciate your hospitality from you and your church and your family. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. To my brother that I already have met by the Spirit. Where he at? Mr. Darwin, my God. Just tip. Y'all know he could just, we could just enter in. Just thank God for the man. I already know you by the Spirit, my brother. I already know you by the Spirit and to all of my perfecting faith church. I'm at home. I'm at home. I believe we got humble heart. I saw some humble heart. If you're here, just holler yes. Yeah, I thought so. I saw some humble heart here. I'm especially appreciative of my family from This Is Pentecost. It's the best we could do. Where we at? This Is Pentecost, where we at? Let our, amen. Let him pass him Brooklyn know we love him. I'm so honored for my precious husband and companion, my dear friend. I could not do what I do if it weren't for his covering and his blessings. Part of our wedding vows, and I'm already going to get in trouble for saying this, but part of our wedding vows, uh, we don't teach it, we don't hear about it much, but the Bible does uh, say in Numbers that when a woman makes a vow unto the Lord, he said that vow will stand as long as her husband allows it. The Bible says that in the day that her husband disallows it, he said he will forgive her, but the iniquity will be on her husband. I told the family of this is Pentecost the day that that man tell me that I can't preach, I'm going to sit down, because that's God's order. But thank God he ain't said it, so. <laughs> so y'all better kiss up to him. That's the one. That's my helm in my ship. That's the helm in our ship. Amen. I'm so honored to have my beautiful mother with me tonight. That's my wave mom. That's my mom. 
That's my mom. That I'm watching the Lord just as such a strength to have around it. Although I'm so grown, and you'll never be grown around your mother. But I'm happy to have a checker that only cares that I stay in the will of God. I'm so honored to have my children, Miles. Wave your hand, Sir Miles. That's Sir Miles. And Jasmine, where's Jasmine? That's my beautiful daughter, Jasmine. And Chris and Shia, can you just hold Shia one of them up? One of them. Ray Brissy, Shia, those are my chaps. Lord, to help me. Is this okay? Just getting this in and out of the way. Now, can you just hug your neighbor and say, I, what is your name again? And just hug them. Just, just hug them. So glad to see you. There's so much love. So much love. So much love. To all of my brothers and sisters that are pastors that are here with us tonight, a special shout out to my sister all the way from the UK, Pastor Dion Lamont. That's my sister right there. That's the sharp sister. Wave your hand. Says, yo, she let us just step out just a little bit. Come here, just a tiny bit. She letting us know she's not from our country. Step out. Come on, just a little. Please, just please, please. She letting us know I'm not from here. Look at how she's dressed. This is United Kingdom right here. Help me to praise God for my sister letting us all know I'm not. Y'all know we can't find that here. <laughs> That's my beautiful, beautiful sister. I love you so much. Thank God, my dear sister. Amen. Just love all in the house. Love your brother. Love your sister. All of our pastors, Pastor Bibby, Pastor Armstead, and the pastors. I don't, I don't want to miss anybody. All of our pastors are here. Did Pastor Bolden leave and he and his... Did they, did they go? Did they leave? Oh, they did. Oh, amen. Well, all of our pastors, if any other pastors in the house, just wave your hand. We just want to greet you with the love of Jesus Christ because you're in the vineyard. We're all doing the same thing for the same cause, I hope. Amen. We love you. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. It, it, everything that uh, I'm, I'm without words, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart, I don't know what God is doing exactly. I do know some of it, but... It is an absolute mystery to us, the relationship that he's knitted uh, between myself and uh, Pastor McClurkland. And initially, I withdrew myself a lot because uh, I'm not a groupie, and uh, um, I don't even know how to be that uh, because of how we were raised. You know, like he said, we came from the same cloth, and nobody was a wonder but Jesus. Nobody, where we was raised, nobody was a wonder but Jesus. So we didn't know how to, you know, ooh, we didn't, you know, it's like, oh, God bless you. We will honor people, but we didn't know how to be struck by people because nobody was a wonder but Jesus. But the Lord uh, just divinely, absolutely divinely uh, put us together uh, in a way that there's a scripture in the Bible that said that they will have one mouth, which means they just speak the same things. I can't tell you the number of times that I would have ministered a word and he ministered the identical word and that's when you know there's a kindred uh, when you are on two places on the other side of the nation from each other but are connected in the spirit and to be honest with you that is the true meaning of touching and agreeing it isn't holding a person's hand because you could hold my hand and not believe what I believe but the true touching in the spirit is that you can be on the East Coast and I could be on the West, but we meet up in the spirit because we're believing the same thing. And so um, I'm without words to describe the kindness. Uh, you know, many of us that know Pastor McClurkin know he's a kind man. He's a very kind man. Okay, I ain't talking about y'all that have to get rebuked sometimes. Those of us that know him. He's a very kind man, and we have uh, been attempting to learn the Lord in new ways and uh, follow the leading of the Lord, and we've been put in some very uncomfortable positions uh, trying to answer the call of what God is asking us to do, and uh, on a couple of occasions, uh, he just got wind of it. And I really didn't know, you know, I'm standing alone and going to try to fight this battle, and he just showed up at one of our services. And when I tell you if one can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight, we tow that place, T-O, we tow it up. T-O-W, we tow it up. 
Amen. And so I just know we're connecting like that. And I'm not talking about none other than my brother, Pastor Donnie McClurkland, that I absolutely love as well. And I don't know all, I know some, but I don't know all. But I believe the world is yet to see another man. And the Lord said to us approximately four years ago, and again, this was when we were on a casual relationship and we were somewhere, and I pulled him aside and I said, man of God, the Lord told me that as renowned as you are in singing, that he's going to cross that over to preaching. And the renownness that you have in singing will be crossed over and be just as phenomenal in preaching. And I'm watching the Lord do that uh, right before our eyes. People that have never heard him minister are always at all. Uh, but you can't sing with that much anointing and not know no word. It takes the word to be able to sing. And so we want to go to the word of God tonight. We are under instructions tonight, and I do pray that the assignment is completed and that we do what the Lord have asked us to do, and then we'll be done. We want to go to Luke 16, and I think I want to start around the 23rd verse. I want to thank God for my son, Brother Huey, being with this minister of music. Brother Huey, Brother Huey is Kojic, y'all. Praise him. Y'all musicians, step back. <laughs> Just kidding. That's my brother. Brother Huey's another one that, you know, in the world of musicians today, Brother Huey came to us in a time where we were in transition of musicians, and he said, whatever you want to, whatever, Pastor, I'll do whatever you need. I said, okay, thanks. And that was okay for the first few times. And I pulled him aside. Well, Brother Huey, you know, you know we want to bless you. Well, whatever y'all could do, Pastor. He was like, okay, thanks. And a few times, after three or four months, of doing my praise team, my choir, my youth choir, my adult choir. We, my financial board is sitting him down and saying, Brother Huey, now man, we, got, we can't do you wrong. Now how you want to bless a pastor? Whatever you could do. And when I tell y'all, this man is committed because of the calling. Uh-oh. And to this day, he's not giving me a cap on what to pay him because he said, my gift belongs to God. Isn't that just, ooh, how rare. Oh, y'all ain't going to get no amens. I know I'm in New York. All right, Luke 16. And I think we're going to start at the, let's see, because we got to do this as the Lord have said. I think I want to start, it's a familiar passage of scripture, and this is going to seem awkward at first. I think I want to start at the 19th verse of our daughter, Minister Jean, if she wouldn't mind reading for us. Luke 16 and 19, what did he say? There was a certain rich man. There was a certain rich man. Which was clothed in purple and fine linen. Yes. And fared sumptuously every day. And had everything he needed every day, yes. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. And then there was this homeless man named Lazarus, yes. Which was laid at his gate. Who laid in the neighborhood at the corner of this rich man, yes. Full of sores. Full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the and rich man's table. And never ask if he could be invited in. Never ask if um, he wouldn't mind giving him money. He just said, can I have the crumbs from your rich table? And what happened? Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, yes. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. That the beggar died. That the beggar died. And was carried by the angels into and Abraham's bosom. And the bosom. beggar who didn't have a dime, who was sick, who had no place to go, was carried in the bosom of Abraham, yes. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Yes, and what happened? The rich man also and died. And the rich man died, yes. And was buried. And was buried. Come on. And in hell he lift up and his eyes. And the rich man, the prosperous man, the man that we for sure would say is blessed, the man that we might even say God is surely with him because of all of his prosperity, lifted up his eyes in hell. And what did he say? Being in torments. Being in 
torments. Yes, bear with me. We're going somewhere. Yes. And seeth Abraham afar off. But afar off. So here's this rich, prosperous man who have lifted up his eyes in hell. We don't preach on this place called hell often, but it absolutely exists. And even tonight, I'm not going to preach on hell, but I'm not going to ignore hell either. There's a place called hell that every unbeliever is going, that every liar is going, that everything that is contrary to what God has said is going. There's no place in between. There's no waiting purgatory. Their body is floating. Their spirit is still here. That's a lie from the pit of hell. They are in hell. You are going either to heaven or hell, and you're not going to miss both. So he lifted up his eyes in hell, being tormented. Hold on. And what did he say? Yes. And seeth Abraham afar off. Yet he can see Abraham afar off. Yes. What did he say? And Lazarus in his bosom. And Lazarus, this poor, poverty-stricken, didn't have nothing. I can't give him the offering tonight. Please don't look at my tithing roll, man. Y'all don't like me. In, surely we probably said he didn't have enough faith. Surely we probably said God could not be with him. Surely we said God would have healed him. But that same man is in the bosom, y'all don't like me tonight, do you? Of Abraham. It's going to get better. And what did he say? Yes. And God, he help cried me tonight. And, said, and what? And he cried and said, And now this selfish, self-centered man that's now in hell is now going to cry and say what? And he cried and said. And he cried and said, yes. Father Abraham. Oh, Father Abraham. Have mercy on there's me. There's no more mercy in hell. It's all gone. This man is now in hell. I don't know how many times he went to church. I don't know how many times he could have gone. I don't know how much of his heart he's given to God, but it obviously wasn't enough. So here's this man now in hell. Now you in hell and you go ask for mercy? All the chances that you could have had on earth, all of this is equal ground. All of this is playing ground. I'm going somewhere, just walk with me. All of this is playing ground. All of this is the true land of opportunity. All of this, it is the true land of opportunity being on earth. Here he is in hell. And he's lifting up his eyes and he's crying, Oh, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And what happens? Yes. And send Lazarus. And can you send Lazarus? The same man you cross over every day? The same man that just needed crumbs from your table? You want Lazarus to leave his comfort of being in the bosom of Jesus? We still going somewhere. Bear with me. He said, "Sin Lazarus, yes." And sin Lazarus. And sin Lazarus. That he may dip the tip of his finger. It's so hot. I'm burning up so badly. Now let's pull back a little bit. If we don't get an understanding, and we don't say in the clarity of why we worship of why we're giving God our heart, of why we're giving God our lives. If you don't stay in the clarity of that, you're going to miss the whole essence 
of why he saved you. And when we're done, saints, this is going to be pretty fundamental for a minute. When we're done, there's no gifts. Your prophecy is going to cease. Nothing's going to matter but your fruit that's going to heaven or hell. I need y'all to walk with me. I promise you it's going to get better. I promise you. He said, now there's two lives here. There's two kingdoms. And you're going either to heaven or you're going to hell. And every message we preach, every song we sing, all the deliverance we're trying to bring is to push your hearts closer to God. Bring you closer into relationships. Everything I need to do to get ready. I can't do it in hell. I got to do it here. All the forgiveness I need to get out of the way. I can't do it in hell. I got to do it here. All of the purifying of my flesh. All of my habits, my struggles. All of the things that I keep putting off and putting off. I, I ain't got time to do it in hell. I got to do it here. This man lifted up his eyes and now he's in torment. And what did he say? Yes. Can Lazarus do what for me? Yes. Sinless. Come on, yes. That he may dip the tip of his finger. That he may dip the tip of his finger. In water. In water. And cool my tongue. And cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this I flame. I am tormented in this what? In this flame. I am tormented in this place. I told them at home. I said, you know, this is why I have such a passion for our young people. And I'm so determined by what, what it's going to take to win them is greater to me than anything I have to go through to get them. Because I want them to get it so bad. I want them to get it so bad. And it's not really fair for us to kill them and to talk about them if we've not shown them and have given them a more perfect way. So they're in the naiveness. You see these games and at the funeral. You see them putting their posse all day, you know, they throw their liquor on them. They do all this stuff as their ritual. Are y'all hearing me? As their ritual to their boy because we haven't given them enough knowledge. Your boy is in hell. He's frying right now. Now, see, let me just talk about that. See, the first thing we have to do is stop lying at funerals and saying they're in a better place. That's the first thing we got to do is stop lying. They need to be real clear. Real clear. No, he ain't feeling none of that, baby. He is flying in hell right now. I promise you it's going to get better. I'm going somewhere. Anyway. It's taking a minute to get there, but I am. Hold on, hold on. And until we help them come into that reality, and until we walk and represent a life, my dad, gone on to be with the Lord, Bishop Stacks. And my dad was strict holiness, you know. Couldn't be a cheerleader. I said, Dad, can I be a cheerleader? A cheerleader? I said, yes, Daddy. Those are those girls. They do the cartwheels. They do the splits. Daddy, I can do it all. He said, ain't that them girls with them short dresses and they flirt? Yeah, yeah, he's no, you ain't gonna be no cheerleader, so I couldn't be a cheerleader. But you know, as a young girl, because I had my dad 13, 14, 15, somewhere around there, I just went buck wild. You know, preacher's kids always go buck wild. Well, yeah, I did it. But you know what? His reverence for God, because my daddy was a man. Wasn't nothing weak about my daddy. My daddy was a man. And the standards he stood for were so strong that in my mind as a little girl, I felt like, who is God that my daddy got to keep obeying? And so there was this reverence that I had for a man I didn't know. But if he making my daddy scared, I need to be scared of him. 
if my daddy got to do what he said. And until we show that kind of reverence and put that kind of fear in our kids, not by preaching to them, but living what we preach. I think they could believe God a little better. Can I just get a little praise right there? Just a little praise right there. And so the Bible said that here he was in torment in hell. And what happened? Yes. But Abraham said. But Abraham said. Son. I need to explain something to you, son, which is still deep that he calling this man in hell son. Son, yes. Come on. Remember that thou in thy life. He said, now remember that thou in thy life. Come on. Remember that thou in thy lifetime. Yes, in thy lifetime. Receiveth thy good things. You had all your good things, and yes. And likewise Lazarus evil And things. likewise Lazarus had a hard time, yes. But now he is comforted and thou art But now art Lazarus is comforted. Well, I think this just right here clarifies all prosperity in ministry. The fact that he was prosperous was not the sin. He was selfish. The fact that he had money was not the sin. All the Bible wouldn't have said, I would that you prosper. Even as your... The problem was he wasn't balanced with his prosperity. Commercial break. So here we are in recession. It is truly a recession. Here we are being challenged in our finances. And here we are making pinch and pennies and bringing things together and not shopping the way we used to and being wiser about our money and where we're spending our money and trying to bring money in. In the process of this, make sure the devil don't make you selfish. That I got to look out for man right now because it's, it's contrary. If ever there's a time to give your money to the house of God, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand how you can invest your money anywhere but in the house of God. When he said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Y'all need to praise him right there. That's my insurance policy. That the devil can't take my money but so long because God said, get up off of her. Oh, y'all need to praise him. Y'all tithers out there that's resting in the will of God. So that wasn't the problem. And if ever that we have to be confident of our finances, confident of our hopes, confident of our future, it is I'm giving it back to God. So the problem was that he was selfish in all that God blessed him. You got your Mercedes and didn't pick up nobody. You got your eight-bedroom house and nobody's standing there but you and Puffy. You got every excuse in the world why you can't do for somebody else. He says, so the problem wasn't the money. It's how he handled his wealth. He said, you got your good things. And so if we're still blinded or if we're still carnal, if we're still caught up in this world, he said, then all that you gain and all the notoriety and all the, uh, uh, the influ influence that you have and all the prosperity, he said, you got your reward. If the extent of what you're trying to do, I'm going somewhere still. If the extent of how hard you're working, if the extent of your overtime and your investments and your education is to give you what you need in this world, he said, you got your reward. I'm going to say that again. All y'all can't make it to prayer services, can't make it to Sunday service, can't be on such and such committee, can't do this or that because you got to go to your job, because you got to take your midnight class, because you got to be in college. He said, you got your reward. Y'all don't like me. He said, you got it, and it's right here. He said, so, he said, rich man, you got your reward. But what did he say? Yes. But Abraham said. But Abraham said. Son. Son. Remember that thou in thy lifetime. Yes, come on, read it. Receiveth thy good you things. You receiveth your good things. Stay with me. Yes. And likewise Lazarus evil and things. And likewise Lazarus evil things. Yes. But now he is comforted. But now he is comforted and thou art suffering. Yes. And besides all this. Now. Now, now, now. He says, so even if all of that weren't the case, even if Lazarus could come down and give you some water, even if we could maybe say, okay, 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 give him a break, cool it down just a little bit. Can you turn that flame down just a tad? Even if 
we could. God help me tonight. What did he say? Yes. And beside all this. And beside all of this. Between us and you. Oh, God. Oh, he had no baha. He had no baha. Seek he had no baha. He had no baha. He seek he had no baha. 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 He said, beside all of this, there's a what? Between us and you. Between us and you. There is a great gulf there's fixed. There's a great gulf. I can't come, but so far. So, rich man, even if we could turn the flames down, and even if Lazarus could, like, you know, throw out some, take a sprinkler. He said, man, beside all of that, read that slowly. There's a what? And beside all this. Beside all of this. Between us between, and you. Between your kingdom and God's kingdom. Between this world and God's world. He said, there's a huge gulf and what? There is a great gulf fix. Ah, uh, say that slow. A great gulf what? There is a great gulf fix. A great gulf what? Fixed. What? Fixed. What? He fixed. said, it can't be moved. He said, there's a separation between me and the enemy and it will never come together never never he said it's fixed Edoba. so while we have this privilege this land of opportunity called earth that the lord said that the wheat and the tear are gonna go up together that the Lord said that the sheep and the goat, they're going to be together. He said, but in the spirit, I've separated them. Now, the problem with us now in the church is we're too much in between. We don't know which side you're on. And the gulf is not obvious because we're too common. We're too carnal. We're too moody. Y'all don't like me. We're too mean. We're too arrogant. We're too full of pride. We're too selfish. And it's not clear where the saints are. And unfortunately, it's not even clear when we go to the church where the saints are. And God is saying there's a fix that we've got to get to cross completely over and that there's a separation between us and this world. I need somebody to get ready for a fix. I need somebody to get ready for a fix. Ah, I need somebody to get ready for a fix. Fix means you cannot. Yeah, oh. A fix means you can't. Be moved. Now we got preachers, we got pastors, we got gifts that we love God and we want to serve God and we're trying to do what's right by God. But oh, there's an enemy that pulls us back on that weak side. And all you're saying is, oh, I need a fix to cross me over permanently. Oh, y'all help yours. Come on, come on, help me and tell the Lord yes. Clap those hands and tell God yes. Come on! 
God said there's got to be a fix. It's got to come in our hearts. He said, preachers, we got to get a fix. Prophets is great gifts. We got to get a fix. prayer warriors, we got to get a fix. Because what God told the gifts to do, he said, I need you to bring my church into one love. I need you to bring my church into one man. I need you to bring my church in one piece. Cross them over from the other. Bring them over from the other side. Open your heart and tell God yes. Clap those hands and get ready for a fix and tell them yes. See, every way possible that the devil could get in and make it a confusion. That's why divorce is crazy in the church. We need a fix. You don't divorce because you just can't get along. Not according to the word of God. I know you don't like me. He said you have divorced because of adultery. You need a fix. I'm trying not to get in your business. He said all of that. He said you two, you two in between. He said you come to church so sanctified, so sanctimonious. He said but you need a fix to stop shacking. And nobody's saying you don't love the Lord. We know you love the Lord, but that other got more power than you right now. You got to get a fix. See, when you get good and saved, you come out of evil forever. You don't never go back. You never go back when you get good and saved. And so we let anything go and we're afraid to talk about spirits, and we're afraid to cut hard some because they want the offerings to stay where they are. Some because it's not popular and they won't get invited into many doors. Why y'all don't like me tonight? The Lord said to us, early years evangelizing things, he said, listen, he said, you quit acting like that these men on earth platforms is heaven. I'm just saying what he told me. I don't mean no harm, no offense. He says, stop acting like if you preach at a certain door, that's preaching in heaven. He said, the only door you got to be interested in is coming in is man. He said, I'm the way. He said, I'm the door. You got to come through right. He said, if you come any other way, you're a thief and a robber. He said, there's a gulf between us. And if we had to bring our hearts honestly before the Lord tonight, you'd have to ask the Lord, say, God, what is this that keep pulling me back? Why am I walking borderline? I'm an intercessor on Monday night. I wasn't going to say something. And you going somewhere else on Tuesday night. He said, when your heart is fixed, it's who I am and ask you to be all the time. And so the church got to get ready for a fix. And this fix have to cross us over out of that carnal side and bring us over into a spiritual side. Not for this conference. Not for the holy convocation. But when I go home, I need that fix to follow me at home. I need that fix to follow me when Jimmy called me and I go out to his text again. I need a fix. Pastors need a fix. Because the demons that are coming to our churches, they sitting in our churches and daring us to preach on them. And because we don't have true prayer warriors and intercessors that ain't trying to go with the pastor, Ain't no prayers going up right. See, the prayers can't go up right. Because he don't hear a heifer's prayers. He hear prayers of love and deliverance. God, help me tonight. 
So because we don't have enough walls in the church of women of God and men of God that are praying and interceding for the message, when the pastors and the preachers come out to preach, they're left out here alone. See, in the spirit, when you pray and those intercessor prayers go up, right? I ain't caring about you. You can walk up and down all these aisles if you want to call yourself intercede. You twisting your behind. You need to sit down. He ain't in that. He ain't in no twisting no behind. You ain't getting no throw. When they go upright, when that wall go up, then what the Lord does is the Lord lifts that preacher above the people and he make him a flame of fire and make the people wood. Oh, open your hearts and tell them, yes, Lord, I need a fix. Tell them, yes, Lord, I need a fit. Oh, no, Baha. Oh, tell them. Cross me, no, Baha, Baha, see, no, Baha. Cross my soul over. Oh, Baha, Baha, see, no, Baha. So you got to get in a place where you're comfortable living consecrated. You got to become comfortable with a consecrated life. You have to become comfortable with not being accepted everywhere. And ain't because you holier than thou. That's a mess to that self-righteous demon. You ain't so holy that you can't speak to folk because you're in the spirit. That's a laugh from the pit of hell. And I don't want your prayers. Don't lay hands on me if you can't speak to me. The capital of every gift of God is love. And when you through evangelizing the world, if you can't come back home and love me, you're going straight to hell with the rich man. Oh, it's holiness. Holiness ain't no religion. Where that foolishness, well, I'm a holiness church. I hope you are. He said, listen, follow peace with all men and without which you can't see God. You ain't got no special religion. No self-righteous demon. I told them the other day how the Lord been taking me through this school. And it's been a hard school called love. It's been a hard school. And he told me, you can't get my love till you know what hate is. He said, first you got to get it out of you, all bitterness, all resentment, no malice, no evil speaking. He said, I don't care if people do do you wrong, it's what you do to them that I'm going to hold you accountable for, not what they do to you. So he told us, Pastor Clark, because you know we come from that deliverance ministry, oh, na na na. And he told me, he said, Tammy, I said if a brother is overtaken in a fault, let him that spiritual. And he challenged me, Pastor Don. He said, you know the love of anointing y'all come from? I said, yes, Lord, I ain't seen nothing like it. He said, mm-hmm. I'm telling you the truth. He said, then if it's so great, I want you to learn how to restore your brother. He said, because anybody can tell them they're a demon, and I'm sick of that. Yeah, they got a demon. Child, I knew they had a demon. Child, I saw it coming. He said, if you saw it coming, why didn't you stop it? So he told me, he said, if you can't restore them, leave them alone. And shut your mouth. I said, yes, Lord. See, it's in the spirit that we warn. It ain't with you. Look at your neighbor say, it ain't you. It's the devil in you. <laughs> it ain't you, pumpkin. Sweet is the devil in you. We warn. He said, if you can't restore them, 
leave him alone because we're wrestling in the spirit where he says so in the spirit the devil know how you feel about it he said if you've been blasting him talking about him like a dog then you see him you're a hypocrite hey hey they ain't feeling no love because it wasn't none there you lying spirit you done talked about him like a dog i said yes lord i mean i want this degree bad i want it bad when you look at our young people you know they don't know nothing. They don't know. I'm not going to kill them for what they don't know. It's my job to teach them. It's my job. They're supposed to be crazy, and I'm supposed to get the craziness out of them. Otherwise, leave them alone. Oh, I know y'all don't like me now. He said, it's a great golf. He said, and it's fixed. And what did he say, sister? So that they which would pass from so hence to you. So that they that would pass. Come on. From hence to you. Come on. Cannot. He said they can't. Come on. Neither can they pass to us. Neither can you. Do you see how clear? There's no confusion in this scripture. You don't need a Hebrew. I'll break it down in Ebonics. It's crystal clear. God is saying I got a world and the devil got a world. And there's nothing about his world I'm coming into, and there's nothing about his world he's coming in mind either. Oh, I know y'all don't like me tonight. It's all being worried about the church, worried about church. I ain't worried about the church. It ain't the church. God ain't on no vacation. And if the church could just get right, God said, I'm, I'm right. Oh, Jesus. He said, ain't nothing wrong with me. It's you doing what I say. But ain't nothing wrong with God. Oh, God, swallow that just a minute. He said, there's nothing wrong with me. It's you doing what I say and cross over. And so the enemy holds us. And the Lord said tonight, he said, there's some souls here that absolutely want to fix. He said, their desire is great. He said, their desire is great. They just need to be pulled over. He said, but if they ever cross over, the Lord said they'll never go back again. I just want to know who's that that he's talking to tonight. He said, if they ever cross over, I need y'all to hear this. He said, they'll never go back again. Go to Psalm 112 and 1, and we're almost done. And then we're going to go to 2 Timothy 4, 16, and we're almost done. Psalm 112 and 1, 2 Timothy 4, 16. Psalm 112 and 1, what did he say? And 2 Timothy 4, 16, God, I love you. Let your cloud enter into the room. Yes, Lord. We can't do nothing without his cloud. His cloud have got to come in to finish this assignment. Thank you, Lord. And all we got to do is tell him, yes, Lord. See, when we get one man and one heart, he going to come in and all of us will get what we want. How many came to get something from the Lord? When you give God, we get in one man and one heart. That means no doubting, no fearing, no judging. No, don't sass me up because you ain't going to be able to. You can't sass me up because I'm after God. If you after God, meet me in heaven. Meet me in the spirit. Y'all, come on. He said, what, Psalms 112? It's going to get good. 112 and 1, what did he say? Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. That feareth the Lord. That feareth the Lord. That delighteth greatly in his commandments. And that gets happy about doing what God said. Hey, hey, no baha, see, ki no baha. Blessed is that man. Yes, come on, help me now. Come on. His seed shall be mighty upon His the earth. His seed is going to be mighty upon the earth because he loves to do what God has said. What did he say? Yes. The generation of the upright shall be the blessed. The generation of the upright is going to be blessed. It's going to be 
blessed. There's a lot of myths. There's a lot of things that we are trying to bring in a oneness. We have to stop a lot of things that have been said and that have uh, 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 undercurrently or, or on the undercurrent uh, uh, slandered or have made our saints of old look crazy. We have to be very careful about the forerunners in the spirit that have prayed us out and lamented us out and cried for us out. And they may have been like Lazarus sitting and waiting for somebody and they didn't have a lot of money, but they had a lot of faith and they had a lot of love and they had a lot of endurance. See, I can't make it and I, 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 and I, and I, I, I humble myself in the presence of Mother Davis. I humble myself in these warriors that look at us and shake their head and know we ain't nothing but a bunch of whippersnappers. Oh, I need y'all to hear me for a minute. That have been tried and been through some things and still at 90 plus can tell them, yes, Lord. So you're not made a saint overnight. You're not made to be, it takes time. It takes tests. It takes trials. Can I go here? Is this okay? Everybody all right? It takes tests. It takes your trials. It takes being tried. It takes you being buffed. It takes you being corrected. It takes you being humiliated. It takes you being talked about. And in the process of all that, you can still tell God yes. <laughs> Woo! It's going through things you didn't ask for. It's experiencing things that you otherwise would have said no, but because you told him yes, you got to go through it. It takes time. To be made a saint. Yeah. It takes husbands leaving and husbands coming and children dying and children in jail. And you don't be bitter against God and the church and can still tell God, yes, 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 yes. The yes that the saints were saying is, I'll give it up. Yes, I'll let it go. Yes. Not my will. Yes. Your will be done. Yes. It's an answer to God. Yes. The word that came, I didn't like it, but yes, it found me. Father, I admit it's me. Yes. So we have to be careful because we have a generation of young people. Please help me to teach this tonight, and I don't want to be lengthy. But we have a young people, a group of young people, that really don't know what it is unless we show them what it is to really seek God. Like my brother Darwin tonight, to just get on your knees. I know it's okay. I'm not going to, you know, it's okay, the standing in prayer and all that. But you need to bow down and humble yourself. The mothers back then, sisters, y'all know we're cute today and we're very refined and we have loofah sponges. Any loofah girls out there? We have our loofah sponges so we don't have rough elbows and rough knees, but the mothers back in the day didn't care because they was on their knees seeking God. And so this is a generation, this is a time now that, uh, let me give you an analogy that the Lord gave. Our 14-year-old daughter, uh, Jasmine, and so we were cleaning up one day, and you know the modern day of no wax floors, you know, and dishwashers. Y'all know what I'm saying. Mother boy used to say, you ain't washing the clothes, the washing machine is washing them. You just put them in there. Y'all know, girl, I had to wash clothes. Oh, she ain't, you ain't wash nothing. That washing machine washed them. Because see, in her day, they had the scrub board. They literally had to wash. So my daughter Jasmine, uh, uh, we were uh, with the baby, and the Lord said to me, he started giving this as an analogy. He said, you know, you got to teach her how to do things without these conveniences as well. He said, because if any of these conveniences go out, she ain't going to know what to do. He said, so the dishwasher is okay if you're in a hurry, but she needs to know how to wash dishes, put them up, dry them, and make sure the whole kid. See, true cleaning is the the pots and pans are stacked in order. Any mothers out there, everything, that's when the kitchen is really clean, when you wiped all behind the canister, you put the toaster back. Come on, y'all, just work with me just a minute. Is this okay? You pull the canisters back, you walk all between the crevices, you sweep the floor, you mop the floor. That's in the, all the dishes are up. There's nothing on the counter. It's clean, it's spotless. Now, oh, don't forget the Windex and to shine up that faucet. And now it's clean. Well, sure enough, with the babies, they, they had a bottle, and so our microwave went out. Because, you know, you just put the microwave in. 
So the microwave went out, and so Jasmine was standing in the kitchen with the bottle. So I came in there. I said, Jasmine, she's going to make the bloody bottle. She said, the microwave is out. <laughs> she was just there. I said, girl, if you don't put some water in that pot and put that pot on that fire, put that bottle on it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's beautiful. Praise and worship is wonderful. But the reality is, when we're really in trouble, where we don't tell our church the kind of trouble we're in, we know how to turn down our plate. We know how to put ourselves in sackcloth and ashes. We know how to shut everybody out and cry out to God to get an answer. And if we keep the kids in the popular convenient, it's okay. It's convenient to worship, but you better teach them how to get at this altar and cry out to Because the demons they're facing are not after you, they're after them. And they've got to know how to cry out for themselves, for the demons that's bothering them in school that they would never tell you about. And so the Lord is saying there's a fix that we've got to get that this world becomes irrelevant because the laws I operate under are of another world. And this is truly temporal. And what I have to cross you over to is for eternity, not for this moment. Watch what he said, and we're closing. Watch what he said, yes. His seed shall be, His mighty, seed upon shall be mighty upon the earth. And what did he say? Come on. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. And what did he say? Wealth and riches shall be in Wealth his house. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endure forever. This man's righteousness will endure forever. And what did he say? Yes. Unto the upright. Unto the upright. There ariseth light in the darkness. There comes light in the darkness, yes. He is gracious and full of compassion. This man is gracious and full of compassion. And what did he say? And righteous. And righteous. Come on. A good man showeth favor. A good man showeth favor. And lendeth. And lendeth, yes. He will guide his affairs He with said, discretion. look at all the fruit of this righteous man. He said he will guide his affairs, yes. Surely he shall not be moved forever. He's not going to be moved. This crossover that we got to make, and we don't have a long time to do it. This crossover that's going to separate the boys from the men. The influx of demonic forces that Satan is bringing, he is not playing. He don't care about your tongues. He don't care about your ministry. He don't care about how popular you are. If you don't get your fix, he gonna bring you down. He don't care about embarrassing you. He don't care about what you look like in the eyes of the people. If you don't get your fix, he's crossing you over. He said, now this man, because he made up his mind, I'm going over. I'm crossing over to the blessing side. I want my kids blessed. I want my family blessed. I want my businesses blessed. I want my generations blessed. What did he say? Yes. Surely he shall not be moved. Forever. Surely this man is not going to be moved. Come on, yes. The righteous shall be an everlasting remembrance. All oh, the righteous is going to be everlasting. What did he say? He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. He's not going to be afraid of anything the devil going to try to bring on. Oh, it's a place I want for myself. See, I don't want to be the blood of Jesus. Oh, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Mm -mm. I'm sick of being on the defense of the devil. I'm ready to get on the office, Satan loose here in the name of Jesus. Come out of my children. Come out of my family. Come out of my husband. Oh, help me to praise the Lord. I want to fix. Oh, no, my heart. I want to fix. Open your hearts and tell the Lord yes. He's coming on in. Open your heart. Tell him yes. He's coming on in. He's coming on in. Come on. He's coming on in. He's coming on in. Oh, 
Oh, he's turning a man right now. I'm gathering my repentance right now. I'm gathering my supplication right now. I want you to cross me over and never to come back again. Get my stuff, Tanya. Yes, Lord. Give me 2 Timothy 4. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're telling them, yes, Lord. We're saying, yes, Lord. We're saying, yes, Lord. See that, yes, Lord. All this meaning is, do you agree with what he said? It's not trying to fill in like, you know, hallelujah, no. It's a question from the Holy Ghost saying, how do you feel about what I said? And if you agree, he said, I already know about you. He said, if there's first a willing mind. He said, it's more accepted to that that a man have and not according to that that he have not. In other words, God said, I don't need you to tell me what you don't have. I need you to tell me what you got because I'm going to work with what you have and that'll be enough. He said, so if your yes is all that you have and you're saying, God, I admit I'm in a low state, but tonight I'm telling you yes. I can admit I'm in a weak state, but tonight I'm telling you yes. I can admit I need a little more power at 
tonight I'm telling you yes. I can admit I need a little more authority. And tonight I'm telling you yes. Now open your hearts and tell God yes. Clap those hands and tell him yes, Lord. Pastor McClure, can I need you to come down? Andrea and Pastor Malini, I need you to come. I need you to stand right here, Pastor, if you don't mind. And I need the two of you to stand behind him. Pastor, do you mind facing me, please? I need the two of you to stand behind him. I need the two of you to hold hands. 2 Timothy 4, what did he say? At my first answer, uh -huh. no man stood with me. At my first answer, this is Paul on his way out of here and giving his charge to his son, Timothy. He's telling Timothy, <clears throat> Timothy, man, I done been through it, but I'm giving you this charge now because I'm leaving here. He said, I want you to preach the word. I want you to be instant, in season, out of season. He said, I mean rebuke. He said, and reprove with all long suffering. Give them a chance to get it right. He said, because I'm telling you, many false prophets are coming. He said, and people ain't going to want to hear the truth. They'd rather hear fables. Don't bother my sin. Just make me happy. The Bible said that they heaped unto themselves teachers having itching ears. When I listened to that scripture again, heaped unto themselves, that means the people caused the leader to say what they wanted to hear. The people their spirits, man that demon to made that pastor twist his words and say what we want to hear because we ain't going to move as long as you're preaching truth. We're going to sit on you like most of y'all did tonight. Just don't tell me the truth. So, Paul said, I got to give you a charge, Timothy, because I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't going to be easy. But there's a charge that's going to keep you. But you're going to fight a good fight. And you're going to hold faith. So here's Paul explaining to Timothy. He said, at my first, what happened? At my first answer. At my first answer, when I first had to go before these demons, yes. No man stood with me. Nobody. Stood with me. That's why we got to get a fix. I love you, saints. When I tell you, if we don't get a fix, we ain't going to be able to take the persecution that's coming to the church. if we don't get a fix. As long as you wishy-washy now, you ain't even entered into the true persecution yet. And if you can't handle this, you gonna join the rich man in hell. To do what God asks you to do, you are not gonna be light Men of God, that would not be accepted in many circles. And this is why the Lord is mounting you in your own. Men of God, thou will stand alone many, many, many days. Thou will be alone. Paul 
Paul said, no man was with me, but what did he say? But all men forsook me. All men forsook me. Come on. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. That means they were supposed to stay. But they couldn't take it. Or else he never would have had to ask the Lord to forgive them. That means they should have stayed. But they couldn't take it and they left. He said, I pray no man. God don't hold it to their charge. What did he say? Notwithstanding. Not withstanding. Yes. The Lord stood with me. But the Lord. But the Lord. Edobah is going to stand with you. What did he say? The Lord stood with me and strengthened it me. And there's no ailment that's going to take over your body. Death will not come before it's time. Nothing. He will strengthen the Dioba Bashandola. Isi Edoba Ha. Elela Loba Ha. Siki Edoba Ha. Edoba Ha. No more fear about nothing. 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 What did he say? That by me. That by me. The preaching might be fully known. Your assignment has changed. There's a gospel you go baha, see kiedo baha. Kiedo baha, see kiedo baha. Elela lo ba, see kian lo baha. Edo baha, see. There's a gospel you're going to have to preach, man of God, that have nothing to do with nothing but you and your fellowship with him. Go in, my son, to that secret place, saith the Lord. Edo baha, and get baha, and get lost with me. You will die on the spotlight in front of many. And we will watch you transform right before our eyes. He said, but the Lord strengthened me. And what did he say? That by me. That by me. The preaching might be fully known. Preaching might be fully known. And that all the Gentiles might hear. That all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And you will be delivered. Out of every mouth lion, that means everybody that have roared against you. You will be delivered. And what did he say? And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Every evil work, yes. And will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. And will preserve you, yes. Unto his heavenly kingdom. Unto his heavenly kingdom. To whom be glory to forever whom and ever. be glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, Pastor Clark, the Lord told us, our spiritual mother in the gospel, before she left here, Our spiritual mother in the gospel had a very profound gift of laying hands, and the Lord used her. It wasn't just laying hands, but she was a transmitter. And she transmitted spiritual gifts. In her early, late 60s, early 70s, the Lord said to her, he said, I need you to start putting hankies around your neck because you're going to get too old and your strength is not going to be able to labor the way you used to. My mother could wipe this whole church out in records time when the anointing was heavily on her. She began to wear hankies and towels and the Lord took her to the scriptures in Acts 19 when God gave Paul to wear the hankies and towels. I don't play with stuff. I don't play with anointed things. Before our mother passed away, 
Her last few revivals were at our church in Sacramento. And she consecrated some tiles for our ministry. And the Lord said to us that you're going to need this for your charge to finish your assignment. I am without words. And the saints, we're praying. Everybody's praying. So, man of God, I need you to lift your heart up to God and we get ready to pray. We get ready to pray. Sister Andrea, Pastor Melini, you all have to get caught up in the same cloud. Because not many will be able to cover him. But Andrea, you will be a Mary at his feet and you will weep. And you will pray. 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 And you will weep. And you will carry your brother. You will carry your brother. Yes, Lord. This charge, man of God. I committed it to you. I commit unto you. That you finish the work. And that you move in the That you move in the anointing that God had put on you. And shut everything behind you. And all things are passed away. And all things are become new. A new man. A new man. Oh! A new man. A new man. A new man. Open your hearts and tell God yes. I need you to open up and tell the Lord yes. I need you to open up and tell the Lord yes. I need you to open up and tell the Lord yes. Oh! Cross my soul over. Cross it over. Cross it over. She I know by her. It's a new place. Oh! Shando ba 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 si eleni oba. Hold and hear the instructions. Hear, hear the instructions. I know ba 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 shando ba hold her. Oh! Catch it up. It's in your belly. Catch it up. It's in your belly. Oh! Oh! Shando ba. Catch it up. Catch it up! Open your heart and tell God yes. I need y'all to open up and tell the Lord yes. I need y'all to open up and tell the Lord yes. I need you to open it. That's him. That's him. Come on! It's a well and it's filling up your belly. It's a well. And it's filling up your belly. It's filling up your belly. Open up and tell God yes. Clap those hands, church, and tell him yes. Open up and tell him yes. Iando ba 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 shando ba. Iki ando ba 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 si ane ni oba. Iando ba 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 si ane ni oba. Iando ba 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 shando ba. Go and don't look back. Run and ask no questions. Go. Shando ba. My son, my son, go! Great vision is before thee, go! Open up and tell God yes. Open your hearts and tell God yes. Clap those hands and tell him yes, Lord. Open your heart and tell the Lord yes. Open your hearts and tell the Lord yes. I want my fix. I want my fix. I want my fix. I want my fix. Oh, you know that 
that I seek you know the change on the inside there's another man that's waiting to come forth I hear the Lord say stand up and stand with boldness stand up I put it in your belly it's in your belly and the devil can't take it away it's in your belly and the devil can't take it away open up and tell God yes clap those hands church and tell him yes help me tell the Lord yes I need y'all to get ready and say Lord give me my fix 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 I want you to grab I want you to grab it. Pastor Arm said, come right here. Open up and tell the Lord, yes. Come on, he's here, he's here, he's here. Pastor Deal, I need you to come. Come on and tell him yes, tell him yes, hold hands. Tell him yes, tell him yes, tell him yes. Come on, come on, where's Pastor Bibby? Is Pastor Bibby here? Is Pastor Bibby here? Come on and tell him yes. I need the two of you all to come. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Open up and tell the Lord yes. Open up and tell the Lord yes. There's a fix. It's going down in your belly. I hear the spirit saying, Oh, 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 another travail is crying, Oh, oh, I see it like a ball, and it's going to roll in your belly, and all your words will be, Oh, 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 oh Lord, oh, I hear the Lord saying, let tears run down like a river, day and night. I'm coming after your tears. I'm coming after your prayers. Open up and tell God yes. Clap those hands and tell him yes, Lord. Come on, church, come on. Come on, come on, come on. I need you to elevate and let's go higher. I need you to elevate and let's go higher. That's the young people God gonna get. Elevate and let's go higher. I need my fix. I need my fix. I need my fix. I need my fix. When popularity no longer matters. Oh man of God, my hand is on you. My hand is on you. My hand is on you. Oh man of God. Oh man of God. I called you. I saved you. Say what I tell you to say. Oh, it's not what's popular. Oh, it's what I put in your belly. Open up and tell God yes. No fear, no fear, no fear, no fear in ministry, no fear in your marriage, no fear. I got you. Oh, I know what I'm making. I know what I did when I called you. I know what I did when I chose you. I didn't make a mistake. My hand is on your life. Oh, compare yourself to nobody. Open up and tell God yes. Open your hearts and tell God yes. Church, I need you to tell him yes, Lord. Clap those hands and tell him yes. Clap those hands, church. Yeah, no, mama, mama. It's your own uniqueness that you got with me. It's your own uniqueness that you got with me. Open up and tell the Lord, yes. Give it to him. Give it in your heart. Give it to him. Open up and tell the Lord, yes. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's a new place of transformation. 
I see your mind climbing out of this state and climbing into another state. I see your mind saying, I got to think differently. I got to see some things differently. I hear the Lord saying, once I settle, it's another place. Things are going to change. You're surrounding your friends. Yeah, nobody. Oh, God. It's going to change again. It's going to change again until you put your heart in me and not in the people. It's going to change again. My hand is on thee and everybody cannot go where I'm taking you. They cannot go. They cannot go. And the pain is because I have to rip them. Because you won't let them go. Edobaha, Siki, Edobaha. Before the world began, my hand was on you. Hear me, saith the Lord, and fear me. Saith the Lord, fear me. Edobaha. The Elelobaha. No, they cannot go, saith the Lord. No. Fear me. Shandobaha siki edobaha. Edobaha siki edobaha. Fear me. Sedobaha siki edobaha. Edobaha. I will take care of them. I will take care of them. You belong to me. Oh, help me. Edobaha. Shandobaha. Help me to praise them. Edobaha. Help me to praise him, help me, help me. Help me to praise him, help me, help me. Help me to praise him, help me, help me. Help me to praise him, help me, help me. Oh, the glory of the Lord is still here. We're gonna pray up in this place in a minute. The glory of the Lord is still here. There's some young people pulling. The glory of the Lord is still here. There's some young people pulling. The glory of the Lord is still here. Open up and tell the Lord. Open up and tell the Lord. Let him finish. Oh, Shando Baba Baba Sieno Baha. Yeno Baba 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 Siki Yando Baha. Yella Lella 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 Baha. Yella Lella Baha. Let it go. 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 Come on. Come on with me, my son. Open up and tell the Lord, yes. Clap those hands, church. He's still here. He's still here. We're still here. He's still here. He's still here. Grab your neighbor by the hand. Natalie, come here. And we're going to sing this. I got another yes, Lord, in my soul. Give her a mic. Grab your neighbor by the hand. And we get ready to pray. Now, there's some folk here that have said, Lord, I just want to fix. I'm tired of weak places. I'm tired of, I want to walk in my authority. And whatever it's going to take, y'all ready to get loose tonight. You say, Lord, let it be at the count of three. You're going to say, Lord, give me my fix. Open up and tell them, yes, Lord. Now we're going to pray our way there. That means you're not looking at me, but you're praying for yourself. And you're getting your supplication for yourself. And you're getting your desire for yourself. And you're saying to the Lord, I mean it this night. And I want to leave something behind. But I don't want to be the same person I was when I came through those doors tonight. This is not magic. But I believe you can transform me. I believe just like Paul can take a light and knock off his beast and transform him forever. This is my prayer. Open up and tell the Lord yes. I need y'all to get your hearts ready. And tell the Lord yes. It's me, Jesus. It's me, Lord. It's me, Jesus. I'm the one that want to fix. One. Tell him yes. Open up and tell him yes. Send your cloud, Jesus. Send your cloud. Let your glory fill this room. In the name of Jesus. It's me, Lord. I open up my heart. It's me, Lord. I open up my mind. Two. Tell him yes. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Whatever it's going to take, I know behind. Whatever it's going to take.
take to change me over my soul is singing transform me transform me transform me I want my fix I'm sick of me I want my fix I'm tired of me I want my fix in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus drive my soul drive it to another place drive my soul drive it to another place drive my soul drive it to a secret place hide me Jesus hide me Jesus hide me Jesus don't let the devil find me hide me Jesus don't let the devil have me hide me Jesus you know Lord you know Lord you know what I want you know what I seek open up and tell the Lord yes let me hear you tell him yes let me hear you tell him yes let me hear you tell him yes it's me it's me Jesus it's me it's me Lord I'm the one that want it I got to have it I can't live here without it I got to have it tell it Tell him yes. Tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. You gonna say it? I want my fix. Three, Lord. I want my fix. No, pray, pray, Danny. Pray, 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 Danny. Pray, pray. Tell him yes.